How do I figure out which sort of property I should invest in? Hi, I'm Ed McKnight from Opus Partners where we help you become a successful property investor right here in New Zealand. And in today's video, I'm gonna take you through the spreadsheet. And I'm really looking forward to this because I've spent so many nights and weekends creating this so you can plug in your numbers and figure out, well, which sort of property should I be investing in? So let's dive into it. The first thing I wanna show you is this results and summary page. Now, this pulls through all of the data that you're gonna input into the calculator and just summarizes your returns. So there are three main types of returns we usually talk about. We talk about inflation adjusted capital gains, any debt repayments you might make on that property, and then also any cash flow that that property generates. There are also two different types of investments you might make into that property. First of all, there's an equity investment. Now, that's you putting up your deposit or risking your equity in order to purchase this property. And then you've also got any cash flow that you're having to put into the property to top it up so that you're able to cover all of your payments on that property. And then what this gives you is a return on investment. So it will give you a percentage of, well, how much did I gain from this property relative to what I had to risk in order to purchase it? And then the really cool part of this spreadsheet is that it takes that 15 year cash flow projection and it puts it into some graphs, which you can see both on the screen and then here behind me as well. Now the first graph shows you, well, for property one, how much money does this property make or lose in a year every year over the next 15 years. And then down here, you've got the cumulative cash flow. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I'm making money in these first five years, what would happen if I just put that money into a bank account? And then if interest rates change, the property's slightly negatively geared, I'll just use the money I've got in that bank account to pay for those additional costs before the property becomes positively geared again. So that allows you to see the money that you would actually have to put into a property at any one time. Now let's head over to the setup, which is over here. And I can put in any property name here. Let's call it 123 Smith Street. And let's call this one 124 Smith Street. Now you're able to put in the location, any investment details, and then any white square is where the rubber really meets the road and is used. So let's call this a $500,000 investment. Let's put them side by side. Let's call property two over here an existing property, so it requires a 40% deposit. And let's call the first one maybe a new build, which only requires a 20% deposit. Now, for tax purposes, based on Labor's most recent housing announcement, we've already updated the spreadsheet. So this first one, we're gonna call a new build. Second, we're gonna call an existing property. And let's say that this is something that was purchased after March 27th, so it's going to go straight into those new tax changes after October 1st. Let's call them both interest only and 2.3%. Let's say that because the purchase price is 500K, let's call that maybe $450 a week. We expect that it's going to rent for. And then we've got all of our operational costs. So let's say that you wanna manage this property yourself, so you're actually not going to have any property management. Let's just put those down to 0%. And let's say that because of that, you're actually not gonna have any tenant sourcing fee. So again, let's put that down to zero. And we can see then the effect on the cash flow. So in this instance, because you're managing this property yourself, you're not having some of those additional costs. Because of that, the cash flow, even when interest rates increase in year six, it's slightly better off. Now let's put that back in there and then talk about some of those assumptions which we usually have. So over here, we've got an assumptions tab. Now, I've got everything in here, and if you wanna understand why I've used a specific figure, usually I've got a comment here that you can see and say, well, where's Ed pulling this data from? Now, the main one I wanna to talk to you about is that long-term interest rate. So there's a general feeling among the property investment and economist communities that we expect interest rates to go up at some point in the future. Now, I've put this in and hard-coded it as from year five onwards, we're going to expect a higher interest rate. And that's based on the assumption that, hey, you could lock in a 3% interest rate for five years right now, and then let's allow you to adjust it after that. Now, over the last 10 years, the one-year fixed interest rate has been an average of about 4.7%. So let's plug that assumption in here and see how that impacts the cash flows. 
Okay, so it makes our property over here, the one that isn't affected by the new tax changes from the government, it becomes quite heavily negatively geared by about $5,000 before recovering on. This one over here, the one that is affected by the government's changes, is even more heavily negatively geared for 10 years after that. And the reason behind that is that any property that is affected by the new tax changes is going to be even more hard hit by any increase in the interest rate going forward. One other thing I want to mention about this specific page is that because we've got tax changes coming in, many people are expecting that rents will increase quite quickly in the short term to account for that change. Now what I've allowed you to do here is adjust the short term rental inflation rate. Now this is done on a total basis. So what I mean by that is that if you think that rents are going to increase by 20% over the next two years, you put that in. I think it's going to be 20% over two years. And again, you can see the graphs adjust. This property becomes slightly less negatively geared. This one becomes even more positively geared. Let's say that it's a 30% increase over four years before reverting back to the standard long-term increase. Again, this property becomes even more positively geared. This property becomes even more negatively geared. So you have a lot of flexibility to put in the assumptions that you believe are going to be the case, the ones that you feel really comfortable with, and you can see how your portfolio is going to look after that. Now the last thing I want to show you before we wrap up is this page. So for both properties, you have a full 15 year cash flow forecast. So you can zoom in and say, well, what do I expect the asset value to be over a period of time? What do I expect the mortgage to be or my cost to be? Now you can go as deep or as shallow on this as you like. But the one thing that I'm really excited about is generally at Opus Partners or on the Property Academy podcast, people will ask us, well, why do you suggest that we should always get a channel valuation done? Or why do you usually suggest that investors should go interest only until they've paid off their own mortgage and then perhaps switch over to principal and interest? And a lot of the reason comes from, well, how it impacts the cash flow or how it impacts the investment that you're making into the property. And so you're able to adapt the scenario so you can see the results of that borne out into the numbers. Now, if you've got any questions or comments about how we should adapt this return on investment calculator into the future, then please let me know. My email is ed at opuspartners.co.nz. And the one thing I do want to mention is that we are forever adapting this spreadsheet as we come up with new ideas. And the next ones I'm going to implement on this specific version that I've shown you today have actually come from another property investor who said, hey, I think you should do a whole heap of changes, which were absolutely excellent. So I welcome those comments. My email again is ed at opuspartners.co.nz. And because we're adapting it, Remember to come back and download the new spreadsheet as well as we keep adapting it and releasing new versions.